Welcome to Bits and Pieces Quilting. Today, we are going to do Puzzle Quilt Part 2, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I want to take another look at the same templates that we used to make the puzzle quilt. If you saw that video, you'll remember that these templates are intended for 10 inch layer cake squares. But if you're like me and you don't really buy layer cakes, I showed you in that video another way to use those templates. And today we're gonna dive in again to make this quilt here. I collected a bunch of really beautiful prints of indigenous artwork from Australia and added in an accent color that has created a completely different look for the puzzle quilt part two. So let's dive right in. In the last video for these templates, we talked about using these templates slightly differently than intended. You can see that this is a 10 inch square and these templates are intended for layer cakes. And as I said in that previous video, I tend not to buy layer cakes. So I wanted to use these templates, but I wanted to be able to use the fabric I had in my collection. And I made this A piece out of what I considered background fabric. So these were all very scrappy from a collection of fabrics and the A blocks were all the same to result in a four pointed star. And I'll put a photo in here so you can see what that one looked like. This time around, as I looked at the templates and tried to imagine what it would look like, I want to make the E block the same across the whole project because I think this shape is going to create a pinwheel when I put four of these blocks together. And this is why I'm really keen for you to look at the templates that you have and think about different ways that you can use them. I'm going to use the E block this time around, but it wouldn't surprise me if I came back and revisited the D block for a smaller pinwheel for yet a future project with a completely different look. And you'll see in the previous video, I used fabrics that I would call kind of country, homey, very warm browns and, and rusts and, and blues. This time around, I am going to use this incredible collection that I have of indigenous print fabrics. So here in Australia, this um, really beautiful indigenous art has been licensed for fabric and i just think these pieces are so beautiful and as you can see i've not been able to resist i've been buying a lot of these indigenous fabrics to uh round out my collection and make some things um you might see a few other videos that use some of these fabrics because i just i just love them i think they're so beautiful so these are the fabrics that I'm using. I don't have the same variety as I did in my previous video with the puzzle quilt, but I think there's still enough variety here that each block will be different. Each block will be a little scrappy. And in looking at background fabrics, or not background fabrics, and looking at fabrics to make the E block with this block, I tried a few things. I had some background fabrics. I have one here that, that was in the running, this very unbleached sort of cotton. So that was one option. But in consultation with Jason, my main, uh, my main consultant, we decided to make the e-block this beautiful rusty red. So I think this is going to just pop like crazy. I'm really excited about it. So again, the same way that we talked about in the last video where I measured each of the pieces to come up with the right size for the e block you need your pieces to be four and a half inches and you also if you saw that other video i really feel like i need to remind you very strongly that you cannot keep your fabric wrong sides together you have to cut each piece with the right side up because this is a very different piece from this. And so you have to cut all of the pieces with the templates right side up and the fabrics right side up. So don't make that mistake. These pieces are four and a half inches wide. I've layered two of them together here. 
um, my blade is getting a little bit dull, so it's probably time to change it. Normally I would cut four layers at a time, but I'm just going to cut two today. Lining that up along the four and a half inch line, I am just going to cut these pieces. There's a little bit of waste here, but it is still pretty efficient. I am going to be able to get six of these templates across. You can see my blade needs to be changed. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to be able to get six of these templates across this width of fabric, which means I need eight strips if I'm going to make 48 blocks. I'm going to make a six by eight layout. So that's 48 blocks. If I can get six of these across the width of fabric, then I need eight strips of fabric. So that's the first one. The second one, you can flip this upside down and right side up as long as you still have the template face up. So I can tuck, make sure my fabrics are lined up properly. I can tuck this edge right up in there nice and tight so I'm not wasting very much. I was careful not to cut too deeply here. And so the really by, by butting it up like this, you're not really wasting that much fabric. I'm so right-handed, so I have to spin this around. It's really not safe to reach over yourself to cut backwards or to cut across your arm. So please take care with your rotary cutter. And so there's four pieces cut, and I will continue to cut down this strip after I lay it out properly and cut out the e-block pieces. In the other puzzle quilt, because of the way that we laid out the pieces across the strip of fabric, you were able to cut these other strips of fabric at four inches. In this case, it's really going to depend on how wide your fabric is. Some fabrics are wider than others. Some are have 40 inches of usable fabric. Some have 42 inches. Some have as much as 44 inches. That all depends. So you can measure each one really carefully and where you have a lot of usable fabric across the width you can cut a four inch strip this is a four inch strip and this will work but some of the others i have cut at four and a half or even four and a quarter just to make sure just so i don't give myself a heart attack really so a lot of those are four inches um some of the others i think this one I think this one is four and a half or four and a quarter. Just because of the width of the salvage, I just didn't want to risk not having enough. So some of them are cut at four and a quarter, others are cut at four inches. And let me show you how I laid these pieces out. I started with the A block down here on the edge. The D block goes up here right above the A block. The B block in this orientation butts up nice and tight to the D block, and then the C block gets tucked in here at the end. That seemed to be the most efficient way that I could find to lay these pieces out, because remember, you can't flip this over. That's not the way that these templates work. You have to make sure that they are right side up all the time. And if you noticed, I cut my, uh, my strip so I have both pieces right side up. And so to cut them, because I know how I'm going to lay them out, I'll just move them off to the side for the moment. And lining up with the A template nice and tight down at the bottom, I'm going to cut up this edge and then make sure that I cut these little notches here. These are really important when you're constructing the block as I demonstrated in my other video. And as always, very right-handed, so I need to spin this around and then cut these last two sides. Right up here, nice and tight to the salvage. I don't want to waste any fabric at all. So I have those A pieces. The next is the D block, making sure that I have that square edge across the top. I'm going to use a, lose a little bit of fabric, but this is as efficient as I think we can make it. As I discussed in the other video, I always, I never advocate that you pull your rotary cutter towards you. I just don't think it's safe. 
but in this one instance, I also don't think I'm going to be able to aim and shoot with enough accuracy to start cutting away from the template. So I will dig my blade in here and pull back and then go forward just to cut that edge. It's not something I normally advocate for, but this is the best way I think to get these templates cut out really, really accurately. Spin this around and cut the other two pieces like this. So a few pieces of waste here. That's A and D. Next we have B. This is the same angle, so you should be able to butt your B block right up against that cut line. And then cut up this way across here and off the edge like that. And a quick spin to get this last little edge cut off. And then finally, the C block. So I'll put that in here. And there's enough space there. We're not wasting anything and there's not a lot of room for error here, but that is going to work, which is great. For the C block, I've just cut right off the edge and I'll come back and get this little didn't I just tell you not to do this? I think I probably did. Get that little piece. So those are the four pieces. This is my scrap, which isn't so bad. And so I will keep cutting and give you an update as to how this looks as the pieces start to come together. As you can see from these photos and from the quilt here behind me, the puzzle quilt has turned out so well. I think it's really dramatic. Those giant red pinwheels just dance across the quilt. And those indigenous prints are really given an opportunity to shine. I added a two and a half inch or a two inch, two and a half inch, a two and a half inch navy blue border just to give your eye a little bit of a place to rest. And then added yet another indigenous print into the final border. I think it looks spectacular. And I hope you will give this a try if you have these templates. As I alluded to earlier in the video, I think there's one more combination that I'm keen to explore to make a smaller pinwheel with these same templates. Thanks very much for watching. Enjoy making the most of your fabric bits and pieces. And make sure to explore your ruler collection so you can rediscover some treasures that you might already have. Thanks for watching.